Good morning and thank you for joining us. It is Off the Press, another um, edition where we take a look at all the latest headlines and with the help of a guest, make sense of it. And of course, you can go pick up the paper of your choice. My name is Felicity Ezewike and I have as guest today, uh, Ifi Oji, Policy Analyst. Good Pleasure morning, to have Felicity. you. Good morning. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, we'll start with the Nation newspaper and then, of course, the chopper shot 250 killed in police bandits forest battle uh, that's a sad one uh, it has two riders pilots injured uh, fighter jet hits iswap members that's a picture of the fire at the transmission company of nigeria tcn in ibado yesterday that's the picture on the front page for you and just minute it you will see jonathan fired me for probing oil racketeers says Ex-EFCC chair, Waziri exposes Ayim's Akin Louise Rose, Yaradoa better in anti-graft fight. Details of all of that is on page 43 of the paper. Um, at the top of it, uh, you see the situation with Khan and the presidency's warning. It's written, uh, Khan Islamic Council disagree on killings. Presidency warns. Of course, Mark and Day seeking out of court settlement with Sat Chairman is another one for you on the front page. And sports, Gallo proud to be first Nigerian Man U player. That's uh, a little bit of cherry news uh, for you on the front page. Uh, and behind the paper, we have the usual comment and debate today. Uh, the talking point is this toxic underside. This toxic underside. Uh, terror so politically correct. That's another one for you on the back page of the Nation, a newspaper. Okay, Ify. Yes. Which of these headlines would you want to pick on first? Um, I mean, let's just look at the uh, the main headline and chopper shots, 250 killed in police bandits forest uh, battle. This is a continuing saga with uh, security issues in Nigeria, and I think it's come to a full head with the Christian Association of Nigeria on one side, and we also have uh, the NSCIA on the other side. And um, one, of the, one of the main issues is that this particular incident happened. And in the Kaduna forest, there was a clash between um, the local uh, bandits or, or um, criminals and the Nigerian police. And it just shows you that even though, yes, they were able to uh, make headway as the Nigerian police, but that a lot more still needs to be done to ensure that we are secure in Nigeria. So how do we protect uh, civilians from the, you know, these clashes? Because sometimes civilians fall victim. I think all hands to honestly have to be on deck with this one, uh, Felicity, because we all know that there are, you know, there, there are some um, shortcomings right now in the Nigerian police and just in security in general. I mean, we have the repercussions of the American government to prove that. Uh, we also know that um, we, we have to make sure that all hands are on deck. I mean, we know that even the Senate right now, they're trying to put things in place to make sure that this happens. So, all right. Um, which other one would you want to talk about? I think about? it's very interesting, uh, just as a continuous, just as a way of uh, segueing in, so we can continue and talk about the, the fact that uh, Nigerians may be bad from owning more than three SIM cards. We all okay, know... Okay, I missed that one. Yes, yeah. it's actually very, very topical now, because if you remember last week or early this week, uh, there was a, uh, a, a more or less like an emergency meeting regarding uh, the Americans' position with the executive order from Donald Trump in yes. America. So they had, with, I think it was Rauf uh, Rebo Sola, the Minister of the, Honorable Minister of the Interior, or, and um, the President, they put together an emergency committee to see what they can do to tackle the security issues. It's a shame that it had to come to the executive order for them to actually put this emergency committee, um, this is what should have been done uh, months ago, but I mean, we're going, to take, we're going to take it where we can find it. So what it is basically saying, I think this, this probably emanated from one of the discussions. So the, the Honorable Minister of um, Communications and Digital Economy, uh, the, um, um, Alaji, uh, the, um, Dr. Sorry, Dr. Isa Pantami, through evoking the Communications Act of, uh, the Communications Act on, under Section 25.1 states that um, we, there, had, there has to be an overhaul of the um, there has to be an overhaul of the um, of data uh, of SIM card um, registration in Nigeria for those subscribers. And one of the main issues is that they want the NIN 
the national identity number to be to form part of the registration process or for new subscriber holders, and even for former subscriber holders as well. And another, and, then a, and the second point that the, the communication that they that they issued raised is that we have to make sure that uh, that we don't have more than three SIM cards, so that we don't have illegal uh, SIM swaps. Yeah. And uh, have as it back people in the do system. now, yes. well, is it implementable? That's the challenge. So yeah. So I think that the idea of them having less than three, three SIM cards or three SIM cards or less. Makes, makes us a bit more diligent. They were actually quite smart and strategic. So yes, in, 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 on the face of it, it doesn't look like it's very uh, implementable because every, every country in the world, once you get rid of your SIM card or you abandon your SIM card, they tend to take up those same SIM card uh, and details and, and reissue it. It's normal standard practice around the world. Where it becomes a threat is where we have a country like Nigeria, where you have these nefarious characters that are actually using it for, for nefarious activities. And so that's why, the, the three SIM card in, 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 in practical terms should work, but let's just see how they are able to pull it off. All right. Um, I wanted to seek your thoughts on the Can Islamic Council disagreeing on killing. Yes. So we, we know that Nigeria is quite polarized when it comes to religion. We have the NS, uh, NSCIA, that's the National um, Supreme Court for Islamic Affairs on one side, and obviously the Christian Association of Nigeria on the other side. Right now, because of the, Boko, the killings that are, have been uh, um, attributed to, the, to Boko Haram, we are almost at a, an impasse where we cannot uh, seem to find common ground. So the, what we have, I mean, one side is saying, the Christian Association are saying that Boko Haram is the main so, um, culprit in terms of the, ki the increased killings in Nigeria, whereas the NSCIA is saying completely the opposite. And I think to even try and bring some kind of uh, resolution to this matter, Buhari uh, issued, uh, um, had, um, had released an op-ed, uh, 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 an article opposite the editorial in one of the national um, publications in the United States, trying to sort of calm down the fires and say that, look, most of these killings are not necessarily targeted at Christians. And, at, and But at the end of the day, we don't even care who it's targeting. We just want all, everyone in Nigeria, once you're a citizen, whether, you, whether you're Christian or Muslim, you need to be safe. All right, let's go to the Punch newspaper. Um, again, insecurity is on the front page, and uh, it, that's the, uh, the one that they are screaming mm. with, um, mm. unlike the Nation newspaper. Uh, the Punch is saying, as you've seen on your screen, insecurity can NSCIA clash. US ask FG to protect Nigerians. And then we have the CAN, we have the NSCIA. And then the big one. Norton Group's unveil regional security outfit symbol operation Shege Kapasa. Okay, you'll find details on page nine of the paper. Uh, before we continue, I just want to hear your thought. Amotreku is barely settled, and then yes. we have this one. Do you see other groups coming up as well? I mean, at the end of the day, People are going to say, not me, people are going to say that this is obviously a reaction to uh, Project um, 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 Operation Amotekun, which we know is a leopard in the, uh, within the Yoruba states. And Shege Kafasa means, I dare you. So if you actually take it into literal translation, there seems to be some sort of a power play and, uh, along uh, geographical lines, which shouldn't be. Again, we need to always remember that we are one country. So in terms of, and who knows, in another couple of weeks, we may hear that um, Indigo have decided to do their own, uh, uh, well, not renegade. So does it mean that the restructuring thing is gradually taking shape if we have more of these outfits coming on? So, you know, I don't actually regions. mind us having these outfits so long as they are closely monitored. Who will do the monitoring? That's where the challenge well, is. Then we can, we can, maybe we can find a way of reskilling the uh, sections of the police to do this monitoring. It doesn't, it, because at the end of the day, they are doing the job that the police ordinarily should do. Uh, so the, what will the police now be doing if they're now supervising all these uh, outfits? No, so if they're supervising these outfits, they are basically working. So what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to allude to is that in a, in a, in a perfect world, which I know we are not in, these you can, you're allowed to have this geographical, uh, I won't call them renegade, and we community. Don't, yeah, community policing. But ultimately, the idea is that eventually these three uh, regions or geographical regions should be integrated to form a united, and, and because it could, so it could go the completely left and uh, degrade to anarchy. So what we want to make sure is that, that is why it is very strategic, that police has to be very strategic. They are doing their work for them, so they, that they, at least the least they can do is try and find a way to make it integrated. 
All right, uh, we still have all the headlines here that we haven't touched on. Uh, let's continue with the ones underneath. Uh, we killed 250 Asaru terrorists in Kaduna Forest. That's the police speaking. And then we also have court clashes claimed seven in Rivers. Many injured. Okada, schoolgirl shot, last map police vehicles destroyed. That's still on the ban in Lagos State. And uh, Louis Bado talks tough, wants Ibado controversial monarchs. Um, OAU hands over lecturer to police for sexually harassing student. And then LG crisis, that story has been captured in the Nation newspaper as well. Let's go to the top and see what's there. Uh, Senate IG seek implementation of community policing. Again, yes. we're talking about that. Very but but when, you, when, you, when um, we have this Shege uh, Kapasa, and then we have Amoteku, and then the police is now talking about community policing, how are they going to integrate this community policing with these uh, various outfits that's coming up. So one, so uh, I mean, there, there are different ways you can do it, right? I mean, it, the, it, clearly there has been the geographical, geographical lines that have been drawn in terms of where these police are. So, so community policing can, you know how you have ECOMOGA, you have monitoring or, yeah, police. You can have a monitoring police that does the integration. So this monitoring police can be the base of, of whatever uh, order you're trying to create within this, you know, the structure. So they will be the overall, uh, uh, the, the over the overall have overall uh, monitoring, oversight, yeah, yeah, oversight exactly into into the. Um, into okay, the which other headlines would you want to pick on? Um, we can look at the OAU lecturer and you know how they've handed it over to lecturer to police. I think this is another step for the Me Too movement. I mean, that's another win for uh, female students or students in general. But we need to just make sure that these is, these are not isolated incidents and, and they are spread around different uh, universities and colleges in Nigeria. Okay. Um, this uh, seemingly escalating situation with the Okada ban. The, pres the state is trying to present a picture that things are coming down while we still have pockets of um, you know, revolt against it. A girl shot, last mile police vehicles destroyed. Are you seeing more of this happening? Well, I mean, we've heard of that incident. I know there's another incident that was reported in a, in a WhatsApp group I'm in. I know that this is not going to go away anytime soon. I know that, that there's some, uh, the, the women been reports of people taking Okada already and people saying they, that let Lagos State try me, almost incensing and trying to provoke uh, last mile. You know, and I don't think that's going to be a good uh, approach to this. I mean, ultimately, well, let's just wait and see what Lagos State has to offer to these uh, Okada riders. And, uh, All right, the Vanguard is next for review this morning. Declare security emergency now, NSCIA tells Buhari, and then a couple of riders to that story. Get set for strike, as he tells members. What's it again? Um, okay, at the top of the masthead, Nigeria loses... 0.522 billion naira in 28,349 oil spills. Details of that story is on page 19 of the paper. Um, again, insecurity, wake up to your jobs, IGP challenges governors. And then please file terrorism charges against Wadumi army captain, others. Okay, at least we have an update on that story now. It, it doesn't seem like it has you know, gone under the carpet. FG others overhaul of card, SIM card registration. Stop disinformation that can divide Nigeria, presidency tells can. Of course, our favorite Mr. and Mrs. Kachun is there. If we have a moment, we'll come to it. Uh, but let's get Ifi to share her thoughts on which, which of these do you want to talk on? Mm, I think we've really covered a lot of the things. Yeah. But I would say that uh, Nigeria losing 0.522 billion in, in 28,349 oil spills is actually quite alarming in this day and age just because there's so many there's so many technology and so many things that are out there that can actually uh, make this preventable you know and uh, let's just hope that they will sort this out in the time okay the guardian next let's see what's there um controversy over victims of Boko Haram attacks we have four writers to that story and i'll take each um, of them presidency flays can's comments on abducted girls Sultan backs Bukhari 6 declaration of emergency. PDP folds president's classification of killings not in coalition on Vail's regional security outfit. And then we have pictorial reportage on the front page, different captions to them. You can see it on your screen. 
Underneath those pictures, we have uh, Southern Middle Belt leaders raise the alarm at the importation of weaponized drones into Nigeria. Community policing will end insecurity, says IGP, while reps demanded immediate sacking of service chiefs by Badabia Mila. Okay, um, okay, this is something on why U.S. attached conditions to return of $308 million Abacha loot. Those are some of the headlines on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Ify, over to you. Um, I think we've talked about the Boko Haram attacks in, in, you know, yes, in already. quite detail. Yeah. So maybe we can look at... Uh... Importation of weaponized drugs. Yes, that's actually yeah. quite important because we know the effect that technology can have on society right now. We know that it's, it's very powerful. And we, one thing about technology is that we have to be very careful how we, whether we use it for good or use it for evil. And having these drones is taking uh, what, all the issues that we have in Nigeria and more or less... Uh, multiplying it and ex exponentially, and that is actually a cause of concern for typical Nigerians, you know. Okay, and what about this why U.S. attached conditions to return of the Abacha loot? Do you, get, it, uh, wait, do you think we'll ever get to hear the end of uh, the loot that was taken from this country by the Abacha? So I think it's important, I mean, it's very clear that why they are trying to I, I'm not, I have, the details escape me of this story, but I, I can imagine what their concerns would typically be in this in any given any situation. So where the U.S. will have an issue is, is how, how, if they are able to return this loot to Nigeria and still the money does not go to the right sources or the right hands or for the right purposes. So that's probably one of the things that we have to look at in terms of, yes, we, this money belongs to us. They, they seem to be holding on to it for dear life, but we need to make sure that this money is also uh, returned to us and we, and we can do with it with what, what we please within the arms of, the ambit of the law. Okay, the, the, the situation with the request for the sacking or the resignation of service chiefs continue and this morning we're looking at why reps demanded immediate sacking of the service chiefs by Gweta Biamila. We all have an idea yes. why they are saying that they should resign. What do you make of it? Should they resign or should they stay on? I think that uh, they should definitely resign because if their resignation is basically uh, in lieu of having a higher person who I shall not name, Ha, you know, resign their own position because, as as as, um, as was said, by I think it was on Monday or Tuesday that was spoken about where Abari Bay talk, went in detail in a huge rhetoric and story about what he wanted, to, like, what he thought was best. He said that we didn't have, we did not appoint these people. So I guess that the the accountability that they have towards their job is to uh, the, the president. presidency and to the federal government. So if they're not able to perform their um, duties and roles uh, satisfactorily, they have no option. But do you option. think we actually have people that will replace these people and do better of jobs? we do. We do. I just feel like, I've, I've said this time and time again on this show, that we just don't have the right people fitting into the right positions with the right intentions to give the right results. Quite unfortunate, really. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us and Thank the newspapers this morning. But before we go, let's take a quick look. We haven't done this in a while, so indulge me. <laughs> uh, Mr. and Mrs. Katoon on the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, the Mrs. is talking mouth wide open. She's saying both are not the same. The popular and accepted adage is who the cap fits, let them wear it, not who the bra fits. Why are you crazy about women with heavy bust line? And then the husband says, it may not be unconnected with the fact that I love soft pillows. All right, if you didn't smile to that, then something is really wrong. Go catch the paper, look at it uh, for yourself. Thank you for your time with us this morning. We'll see you again soon on this program. Keep watching Plus TV Africa. Take care.